probably most elite clubs try and be multifaceted, have that approach. Um, yeah, what do you think makes Feyenoord sort of unique in this space? Yeah, I, I don't think there's any one thing that you would say, oh, well, they do that that um, at Feyenoord that other clubs don't do. Uh, but I do think that the mix of all of the things together sort of does make us unique in the way that we operate. And it might be difficult for me to communicate that. And if you, someone like yourself came and watched us work for a week or a day, you might see things much more clearly, but I'll do my best. Uh, I think for us, our multifaceted approach is, like I said, all clubs try to do that, but we look at it in sort of four, four pillars or four key areas. And those are uh, uh, movement literacy and, and movement quality. Um, uh, lifestyle, so that's a whole host of things underneath that, but movement is the same. Um, periodization and planning, and then uh, DNA. So like, what do you think are the most important sort of themes to a successful uh, young player developing and over a shorter period of time and hitting those criteria markers that you've seen? I think the team environment and the culture is super helpful. Um, it doesn't have to be there in my experiences, which is not, it's not 30 years of experience, but um, in my smaller, small experience amount, it doesn't have to be there, but it can be a big booster and a big accelerator. Um, for example, we have uh, had in the last two seasons um, two things that spring to mind. One is a, like a breakfast club. I don't know if you ever saw the, the Michael Jordan, the last, da the last dance mm -hmm. documentary. They had like a breakfast club. Uh, training in the morning with the famous PT now, I forget his name, but um, they were coming in doing weights early in the morning. So we've had a breakfast club running and in the group that we had this year, the breakfast club initially was obligated. We made three players obligated to come because they needed it. Um, and they came in every training morning of the week earlier than the rest of the group and then they had breakfast. For those that haven't done that coordinative base movement, you alluded to France Bosch sort of influence before, um, what, you know, what were some key things that the players were saying that they felt it helped them with in terms of their performance on the field? Yeah, I think that's, is it, is it that for that style and that coordination based training, it's, it's a tricky space because it's not like you have the feeling at the end of a session that like you're completely dead. And, you know, some players more or less want that, like they feel like they've sweated a liter of sweat out and that they're, you know, that, that or that they've squatted so heavy and they've got muscle pain that that needs to be good for them. Um, with this, you don't really have that so much and it takes time. But in my experiences of training myself, it takes sort of three or four weeks and then you're just starting to feel that extra bit of sharpness in whatever it is that you're working on. Have you found you get more return to effort with working on their efficiency of movement compared to jumping on a bike, let's say, and doing aerobic capacity? Uh, or, do you, or is it not one or the other? It's a little bit of both to get the best result. Yeah, I'm not opposed to 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 the to the both, or I'm not opposed to one or the other. Um, but I do think a case by case. Um, obviously, some players, if you're working with them, to make big coordination based changes, depending on age, depending on training history, depending on injury history, you might be looking at someone who's who's. Uh, movement habits or their, their movement patterns are so ingrained in a poor form of stability that to get them out of it, it's going to be a 12 month job or longer. Um, in those cases, you might be better off just going for the off, you know, capacity based in terms of traditional strength or conditioning um, off feet or on field. Um, but others where they're young or they have a relatively um, low training history, then you know, okay, within a couple of weeks, I can make, you know, not instantaneous, but quite quick changes for, um, in comparison to, you know, for example, traditional strength is going to take probably 12 months. You mentioned the movement analysis a couple of times now. Is that something that you use some software? Is that your performance analysts that are feeding that back with the sports scientist to yourself um, and Ruben, or how does that sort of look? We do that in uh, we do that in preseason testing and all the way throughout the year. So usually we start in context. So actually we just get an iPhone. If I'm filming you, you're in a small sided game, or maybe it's eleven v eleven, or in training is always best because I can go around and move at different angles and whatever else. And I'll just follow you on Zoom. Like iPhone Zoom cameras are fantastic these days. Follow you on Zoom, but the most high intensity periods in your 
five minutes or whatever it is. Um, it's a little bit painstaking finding those moments, but when you do find them, looking at them afterwards, the process is subjective at the moment um, in terms of the in-context analysis, but making little notes on um, more things that if people want to know about it, looking at the work of Franz and reading his, his books and his texts and his courses is, is really interesting.